How many come to praise his name? Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Everybody say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. for another Wednesday night. Isn't it a blessing to be alive on Wednesday night? Amen. Let's open in prayer and let's present ourselves before the Lord and ask God to use us the way he wants to, okay? Father, thank you for the privilege to honor you, to glorify you. We bless you. We praise you. The redeeming love that you... honor to you and to your majestic name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, mighty Lamb of God. We want to bless you and we're praying, Lord, for your hand to reach out and touch those that wanted to be in and minister. We offer to you our bodies, our lives, in the name of Jesus Christ and all God's people say it. One more time, turn to your neighbors, shake their hand, and bless them in the name of the Lord. Number 172, it is love. There is something in my soul that keeps the shadows all away. It is love, my Savior's love. Something lightens every burden, gives me gladness day by day. It is seated for a moment. I'm glad that his love has been shed abroad by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God has given us that. Amen. We're going to wait upon you for your giving this evening. Thank you for your faithfulness as you give unto the Lord. God has really um, blessed so many families in our church. All the families in the church, not so many. How many knows we're all blessed? My, my, my. Did everybody have food to eat today if you wanted it? Don't want to mess up your fasting, amen, if you fasted today. But, amen, we've been, we've been turning the plate over and looking at some things and praying, getting a hold of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you what, 
Fasting don't move God. It just moves us into the place where God is. Isn't that wonderful? And you and I get to be blessed and be a part of what he's doing along this trail. So thank God for that. And thank you for your faithfulness and supporting our ministries that we, uh, we reach out through. Uh, there's so much opportunity that God is uh, revealing and uh, leading us into and towards. So I'm thankful that you and I get to be a part of that. Amen. Amen. So uh, would you lift your hearts with me? Let's thank the Lord. God, you have helped us so many, many times. We don't deserve the blessings you give, but we thank you because it is a gift of your love. Father, we want to be the best stewards that you've trained us and you've taught us in your word how to be that steward over the things that you put into our hands. So blessing every household, every wage earner. Fathers, we give, we give unto you and the work of the kingdom. We pray for the ministries of this body, Lord, that you have set in place that reach and touch and love and serve. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So we honor you tonight with our gifts back to you, blessing you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people say it. Amen. Amen and amen. Help us out, Sister Nye. Number 115, In the Shadow of the Cross. As we journey on toward heaven, shining gold. Awesome day, will it not? And I'm glad that God gives us that opportunity to be able to uh, stand in front of him. We can't earn it. We'll never be there by our own merits. It's only by the work of Christ that we're going to get there. Is that not true? So for that, we are thankful. Praise God. I'm glad that he gives you and I that open door. And he said, whosoever will. And I'm glad I'm one of the whosos. Got any more whosos in here tonight? Yeah. Amen.
I'm glad I'm a whoso. Amen. By the grace of God. We're going we're gonna to pray for some needs and ask God to minister. There are several needs that are there uh, that are among us that we need. Um, God just, he, he, he employs you and I in unique and special ways. And I was reading in the scripture something that you've read a lot of times before. But the Bible says in Isaiah 53, Jesus was despised and rejected of men. He was a man of sorrow. He was acquainted with grief. And he said, we hid, as it were, our faces from him, and he was despised, and we esteemed him not. That would not fit on modern religious TV. They wouldn't like that scripture, but it's true. Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrow, yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. We are healed. Is that a suggestion or is that a real promise? Healed. It's a real promise, ain't it? Amen. We have a couple of needs we want to uh, acquaint you with tonight as we uh, go together in prayer. Um, different, different things going on. Sister Zelda couldn't make it. Brother Jerry has got an ugly old nasty fever, and he is real sick, so we need to pray for Brother Jerry Drummond tonight, asking God to minister for him. And uh, Sister Linda Rogers landed back in the hospital. Most of you know that. She told me a little while ago they're doing surgery in the morning, taking off another part of her foot. Um, it's really a tough thing. She said that they're going to leave the wound open and go back Friday and do some more work on the tendons and everything. And she said to be sure and tell the church she loved the church, thanks the, thanks the church for their prayers and uh, keeping her lifted up in prayer. She really wishes she could be here. And just because of those things, just having that difficulty as it is. Amen. And then also, uh, Brother uh, Randy's uh, mother-in-law, uh, Velma Davis, uh, she's in the hospital, uh, dealing with cellulitis, got some things going on there. But they're going to uh, put her on some oral medication and hopefully can send her home and, you know, uh, tomorrow or the next day, depending on how things work out. But really needs that prayer to prop her up and to help her. So we know that God will do that, and he will... Uh, he will move with his hand by his stripes. We are healed. That's what he said. Amen. We have to punch that in every now and then, don't we? How many of those, when you're the one feeling sick, it's hard to punch that one through? That's the reason why we need, the Bible said, pray one for another. Amen. That's how we do that. So we're going to pray for these and ask God to, to minister, and I know he will. Um, do you have other needs that I may not have covered yet? Uh, Sister Monica? Wow. My goodness. I love it. Love it, family. I'm going to ask God to minister to them. Uh, Brother uh, Eddie's brothers. Um, son, their nephew, uh, one of them they found deceased Sunday, 53 years of age. Uh, a lot of things going on. Our country's in deep trouble. If our country's in trouble, that means our kids don't have a future. Is that not right? I, I grew up in a different America than it is today. And a lot of you here did that. Sister Danielle? Yes. Wow. Now that is awesome. That's what we keep pushing for. Sister Monica? Yeah, that's it. Get rid of that viper. My, my, my. That's right. Yeah. Get that viper out in that fire. I'm with you. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Let the Lord have his way. I don't know if I'll let John preach or not. You just about got me stirred up right there. Brother John? Yes. Our neighbor that has 
been in the hospital. He, he got come home last week. He's still not doing well, but he's much further along than we expected. They took out 16 lymph nodes, and none of them were involved. Wow. None of them had cancer wow. in them, so that's well, that plus. part's good. Yeah. That Bill West camp, right? Bill West, Bill West, Bill West camp. camp. So that part's really great. Amen. Do y'all know Jesus is coming? Amen. He might come tonight. When he comes, I want him to find me doing for him. Amen. amen. And I know you do as well. So we're going to ask God to minister for these needs. Any others, amen, you want to vocalize? Just to... Yes. Yes. Amen. Remember, Sister Linda's sister, they found another growth lump. Is that what you said? Another one on that brain. Ask God to minister. Sister Elaine. All right. Wow. So that infant, five months old. Good enough. So that family needs some help, those youngsters. Amen. Amen. I, that's just, mm. Sister Courtney. Mm. Yes, lots of families. Yes. Here's something. Let me inject right before we pray. In our in our time right now, technology has uh, speeded up the transfer of information. Fifty years ago, something happened around the world. You wouldn't hear about it for a day, two days, whatever. You know, it took time. It can happen, and within one minute, it can go around the world in a flash. That's good, and then yet it's troubling. Because, as Sister Courtney just mentioned, when that information comes out, it goes out so fast, and there's so much of it, there's no break. Uh, there used to be a break in the bad information that you got. You know, you'd get it and it'd be behind the time. Now we get it so fast. Um, Satan is doing the same thing he's always done. He's out to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus canceled that. He said, I come to give life and let you have it more abundantly. Amen? That is our place. I'm not negating. I'm not ignoring the bad things. I'm just saying, when, when we hear that, when we get that, we just remember, amen, if it works for the negative, it also works for the good. The gospel can go out right now, it does go out, and it goes around the world in an instant in a flash. So the word of God still counters the works of evil and darkness, amen? When the light shines, the darkness leaves. What you and I are to do is to let the light shine. So let your light shine, he said in the book of Matthew. We have a light to shine. Amen. How many rumors learned in that little song? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Well, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Instead, we get in an argument and blow up like crazy. And dark takes over. Mm. I'm glad I serve Jesus, aren't you? Oh, one day God's going to anoint me where I can sing and you'll be in trouble. God is so faithful. He is so faithful to us. And we can ask God to minister. These are needs that are very important tonight. People going through real problems, having real issues. But we know the real answer and his name is Jesus. And what we do is lay hold of the promises of God on people's behalf. People that are fighting those things will struggle in their time of faith. You and I can lay hold of God much easier sometimes to help people in that. So that's what we want to do. Our country needs help, and we ask God for protection. Also, Brother David, uh, as you know, Brother David, uh, our security guy. No, David Barron. He had eye surgery today. Oh, wow. And so uh, he needs, uh, needs a little help there. Ask God to minister. 
Brother David Rhodes, want to keep remembering him in prayer. He's going through some challenges, of course, physically. Ask God to minister for him as well. Praise God. Brother John? Yes. Penny needs prayer. Penny Obar. He's croupy. <laughs> Love him from a distance. <laughs> We're going to pray for him. Amen. Yes, indeed. Yes. Yes. All right. Get him past that surgery. Bless her heart. So remember Tiffany. Okay. Remember Sister Becky, procedure coming up. Amen. All right. Just remember, we pay doctors to find something wrong. Just remember that. Somebody said, well, I won't go to the doctor to do that. I can go to church. People find something wrong with me all the time. No. Jesus. We're going to pray for you, Sister Becky. Amen. Y'all forgive me. I try to lighten us up a little bit because I want you to lay hold of God. God's faithful, folks. He's faithful. Amen. Give us a little chorus song there, Sister Nina. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Oh, yes, amen. Oh, to my God's, God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Eternal. Oh, to my God's unchanging hand. One more time. Sing that unto the Lord. Synchronize your heart. Oh. to carry these hearts and these lives before the Lord and take hold of the promises that God has given to meet each one's needs. So would you right there as you're standing and praying together. Father, thank you for the privilege given unto us to stand in the gap and make up that hedge, to bless your name and to offer unto you our bodies that living sacrifice. Lord, you have already made account of all these needs that we have vocalized in this sanctuary tonight. Nothing is too hard for you. Cancer does not have the final say. It does not cast the final vote because by your stripes we already have been healed and we bless your name for touching those hearts and those lives thanking you for the testimonies that are already now blossoming and being heralded and vocalized. Thank you for the ones that no longer fight it. Those that are dealing with it, stretch your hand. Father, by our faith and our, our pleas of submission unto you with our own bodies and lives, we lay hope of that promise that declares the righteousness of Jesus and the price you pay is enough to bring healing. If it's diabetes, God, you will bring healing into that physical body. Other things that bring challenge and difficulty for function and for mobility, you're still the deliverer. You're still our emancipator. You are our mighty God who never fails. And therefore, we bless your name and want to bring honor and glory to you and to your majesty, the everlasting and the most high. God of our redemption. So many, Lord, need that divine touch to draw them into the place of safety and salvation. Lord, we ask you to move on those hearts, to draw them into a place where conviction gets a hold of that heart. They're convinced they need you, and they humbly submit to your life and to the way of living for you. In Jesus' name, we ask for the mighty hand, Father, that you would stretch across our land in our lawmaking body. For the Congress, the Senate, the White House, and the Supreme Court, move by the might of the Holy Ghost and sway those hearts and those minds into the vein of righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. They will forsake the darkness, forsake wicked ways, 
and lay hold of the promises of God. For your divine protection, we pray for our military, our men and women, for our law enforcement, for men and women, for the families that are connected. We're asking your mighty hand to work, God. There is not a thing too hard for you. And when your people lay hold of your promises that are yes and amen, you are obliged to minister, to reveal your greatness and your might for the hour in which we are now living and breathing. We honor you. We want to magnify you. We want to glorify the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. As the Apostle Paul shook off that viper into the fire, we shake that off. We will not let it bring us down. We will not let that serpent's bite put poison into our spiritual life. But we will proclaim the name of Jesus and the victory through Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, the direction by the living word, and live for you, God, this day, this hour, in Jesus' glorious and majestic name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, to you we want to bring honor and glory, blessing you, because we know that you hear, you answer, and you minister. Glory to God, glory to God. I want to hang on to that unchanging hand. Thank you, Lord. Sing it unto the Lord if you know it. Amen. Hold to that unchanging hand. Hold. God's unchanging oh yes, oh yes, oh yes just build your hopes on things eternal eternal hold to my God's unchanging hand if you got a grip on his hand would you shout amen oh thank you Lord give him a hand cheer and appreciation amen, amen, amen Hallelujah. What an awesome God. You can be seated for a moment. Just want to give you a personal invitation. Little Harper is turning the great big two. Anybody ever heard of terrible twos? Hunter said it started six months ago. <laughs> I said, why was that? He said, I spoiled her. I bet he wasn't the only one. I bet there was a grandma involved in that one. I don't know a lot, but I'm just saying. May 27th, that's a Saturday, 1 o'clock. The Mayberry Senior Center, they're having that uh, down here at that. Amen. We're sorry that the, the facility out here, we're down till we get that uh, fixed. We're working on that, getting that taken care of. Um, the things we've had scheduled ain't quite panned out, but we'll get back to it and get things up cooking for you. But that's just where we are right now. We will get there and make things a little easier probably for everybody, hopefully, as things move on forward. But I'm glad we get to celebrate our kids getting older. Amen? You know, there's, there's so many that don't get to celebrate things like that in life. And I, I hear stories, uh, read about stories, and hear testimony of, of many events that go on. And, and it breaks my heart to hear when families deal with such tragedy and things that you just you look around and you say, Lord, thank you that that I'm not dealing with that, but I, I certainly don't want to forget or overlook people that are having to go through things and deal with such challenges in their life. God is good to us, is he not? But if everything turned south on you tomorrow, what would be your testimony? What did Job do? He said the Lord gives and the Lord takes, but... Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, I want to tell you, you'll never, you'll never give God more praise than he can bless you back for and with. Is that not true? Amen. We asked Brother John to uh, minister for us tonight. Most of you already know that Brother John and Sister Courtney are stepping up in ministry, and they're going to be going to uh, Coal Hill, I'm not trying to steal the thunder, just... He'll tell you a little bit about it, but God's worked out some things. I believe this is the will of God. And I told him that'd be fantastic. Amen. I just told him you better not forget who I is and who we are. Amen. I want to make sure about that. But I appreciate Brother John. And I asked him to minister for us tonight. So he's going to come and he's going to bless you. Give him a great big appreciation.
think we're good. Well, thank you for allowing me this opportunity. And yeah, we uh, th this whole thing came about in a weird way, because <laughs> we knew we knew we were called into ministry, and and um, it wasn't too long ago. Well, I guess about a couple months ago, um, Pastor John had, had said, "Hey, there's a there's a pastor up the road that needs some help with their internet," and that's how I met Paul. It is his fault. Uh, but it's a good thing. It's a good thing. And so we met each other, and, and he asked me. He says, well, hey, are you, are you interested in youth pastor? And I said, no. I said, nope. Not my calling. I'm uh, The generation these days just really get on my nerves. <laughs> I, and not them. Let me, let me clarify. Not them. It's, it's, what, it's what they've, what we've allowed to come and take the place of, of I mean, let's just call it what it is, right? We, we, it, right? We've allowed what has happening to our youth to happen. And if you don't realize that, there's some altars down here. And I'm guilty too, right? We as a country, we as a nation, we as a church, pretty much given up. And that's sad because now more than ever, we need to be in this fight. Now more than ever, we need to, that's right. Everything we have, hold nothing back. Because I promise you, the world is holding nothing back. They're going to the schools. They're coming to the homes. And it won't be too long. They'll be banging down your front door in this church to bring in the worldly ways. In this, I'm so getting off my message, but it's coming. And uh, so he, he asked me that time, and I said no. And about a month went by, and he said, are you sure? And I was like, I'm sure. And at that point, we were preaching to a couple other churches, and um, another pastor said, hey, I need a youth pastor. And I'm when I had a little bit of hair, I was trying to pull it out. And I looked, I looked at Courtney and I said, What in the world is going on? Everywhere we go, they say, You want to be a youth pastor? You want to be a youth pastor? And I was like, I I'm not. God, I don't know what to do. <laughs> he does. And the minute I said, Okay, I'll do it. Talk about the floodgates opening up, and this old man's head began to get some ideas. And it wasn't long, and I had the youth room painted, and I had this done, and I had that done, and I had this done. And so I said, "Okay, God, I guess this is where we're going. This is where you need us to go." And as John always says, he doesn't need us, right? He doesn't need us. He created the world in seven days. He doesn't need any one of us to stand behind anything and preach his gospel. That's our blessing that we get to do. So tonight, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to bring this to you without bawling my eyes out. Because Pastor asked me Sunday, he said, do you want to, can you preach Wednesday? And I'll tell everybody what's going on. And selfishly, I said, ah, you know, I've got a lot of things going on. Um, most of you all know we were without an income for, for some time. About five or six weeks, I got laid off unexpected. Well, I kind of knew it was coming. But you know, such as life, and through the grace of God, because I promise you, this fleshly body could have done this no way possible, okay? We have not missed a payment on anything we've had, and it's just amazing after amazing opportunity that he has done for us, that he has done for us, and then this coming Monday, I started another job, not just a job, but a job four years in the making, because I met the CEO of that company while working at a company, and he said, let's exchange information, and we did. Two years ago, he tried to hire me, and things just weren't working out. Last month, he called and said, your offer letter is in your inbox, and after four years, I'm proud to offer you this position. And you talk about a God thing. Guys, I couldn't have done that. That's our father at work. That's our father at work. You know, and it's not this flesh. It's not this body. And we'll talk about that. It's not this body. We have to be spirit led. Our eyes are going to deceive us as along this journey. Our thoughts, our feelings are going to deceive us as we journey through this life. But one thing that will not deceive you is the spirit of God. It is the Holy Spirit that will lead, guide, direct, and give us that next step to take when we can't see it. So if we are to hear and see and experience the movements of God, 
we must be in that right frame of mind. And this cannot happen in the flesh. So if you're able to turn to Romans chapter 7, verse 18. And if you can, please stand while I read this. I apologize in advance for the sniffles. Everyone's got allergies right now, so we're all in the same boat there. Romans 7, 18 says, For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are grateful and we are honored to be able to gather in your house tonight and in your name and serve and worship you. God, I pray that something said tonight, that this this humble servant's words can touch someone tonight and let them know that your spirit will never leave us, but will lead and guide us if we allow that to happen. So, God, we know that the Holy Spirit's a gentleman and it won't go where it's not wanted. So, God, let our fleshly bodies take second seat tonight and make way for the spirit to have its way tonight in our lives and in this service. In your holy name we pray, amen. And I'm also going to apologize in advance. I walked out of the bedroom getting ready to leave, and I was tears flowing down my face. I said, Courtney, it won't stop. She said, what, your nose? Well, that too. I just kept getting things. And I said, heaven help these people. I'm going to have them here till midnight. But I promise you I won't. I'll get you out. So I want to take there he is. I want to take this uh, a couple this first verse here. I'm going to break it down a little bit. And Paul says, "I know that in me dwells no good thing. Dwells no good thing." He states something we already all know that inside of him there is nothing good. In fact, it was the fleshly side of him that just months back from this time that he wrote this, he was putting Christians in jails. He held the coats of the men who stoned a Christian. So for him to say that is very much an understatement. There was nothing good in his flesh. But that's relative to where we are today without Christ. We are unable to do any good thing inside the flesh. Jesus also informed, of, informed us of this in Matthew 19, 17, when he said, there is none good but one. That is God. Okay. God's not flesh. So can the flesh really do anything good? Jesus said it, not me. Our flesh can't do anything good. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I cannot find it. Remember, he's already said there's nothing good in me. But there are a lot of people that do good things, right? Companies. I mean, think about it. Some companies, some people who have a lot more money than I do have foundations and have methods and processes that sometimes dictate that they do good things, but is that really good? Let me step back here and say that. When flesh sees and judges things and calls it good, please remember, that's the flesh calling it good, right? Is that not what we have going on today? Our flesh sees things and says, that's good, but that's flesh judging flesh. That's not good, right? I'll get back on that. So even if we to know to do good, we don't have the ability to do good. We are in the flesh. We are unable to do it because flesh does not have the know-how. But there's a spirit, if you will. There's the spirit, and then there's the flesh. And between those two things is a wall or veil, if you will. When we are in the flesh, it's referred to as self. We are unable to see the things of the Spirit. We're unable to hear the Spirit. The tearing of the veil in the temple when Jesus died was a symbolical of that very moment. It symbolizes the flesh no longer has to go to flesh. You understand? Come on. Are you getting that? He said, you don't have to do this walk anymore. We are unable, or 
no good thing. It symbolizes, symbolizes the place that Paul and mankind is in when we do not have the Spirit leading us. We do not have the Spirit guiding us. We don't have it disciplining us, affirming us, and we sure don't have it empowering us. This isn't the first place he called this out, Jesus. In Matthew 26, 41, he made the disciples aware of this very same thing. Watch and pray, he says, that you enter not into temptation. The Spirit is willing. And he affirmed it before Paul ever had a chance to realize it, but the flesh is weak. Don't you know, the very men that he spoke that to that night, just a few short hours later, were beginning to witness this paradox in their mind. And let me tell you why. Because Jesus said the flesh is weak. But they watched a man get kicked, beat, stabbed, spit on, torn asunder. They watched him thrown on the ground. They watched his hands get nailed in his feet and in his side. And he said that flesh was weak. I'm sorry, that flesh was the strongest thing I've ever seen. But you see what they were doing is they were looking through the fleshly eyes. You see, they failed to pick up the spirit that he was trying to get them to understand because their fleshly eyes seen this bruised and battered man. But the spirit was doing this work that they couldn't see. You see, the spirit, it was reaching into every person's past. It was reaching across the ages at what was going on in the world at that very moment. And it was reaching decades and decades and millennial in the future. And what it was doing that the fleshly eyes could not see, but that the Spirit was orchestrating at that very time, it was doing the, the fleshly ritual that was talked about in the Old Testament. You see, the men brought the lamb to the priest after laying their hands on it for the home. And that priest sacrificed it. Well, it was the Spirit at that point in time saying, okay, Jesus, you're our lamb. I'm going to pack on the sin. I'm going to pack on the turmoil. I'm going to pack on those things. And then we're going to go sacrifice. So you see, they watched that all happen in their fleshly eyes. They couldn't see that the Spirit was packing it on. And when he fell, it wasn't under the weight of two pieces of wood. He failed because the Spirit was packing on our sin, your sin, my hatred, my racism, whatever you have inside. He packed it on Jesus. The flesh couldn't see that, but the Spirit was doing the work. He was preparing. The Spirit was preparing the sacrifice before the altar, just like the Old Testament. The flesh does not know how the things of God work. The the last time they were both together, the spirit and the flesh, was in the Garden of Eden. Oh, that's silly. Why do you say that? Because the Bible said God walked with man. In the morning dew, you have the flesh literally walking beside God. That's awesome. And we screwed that up. We screwed it up. Because Adam was of the flesh, and he sinned against God. He drove that wedge between the two. Never to be fixed until Jesus came. It was a constant battle in our lives. We must die. We are flesh. Now, I'm going to throw you off for a little loop here for a second. The body we are in is made of things that are carnal in nature. We are. The Bible said God made. Now, God did make us. The Spirit made us. But how did he make us? What did he make us out of? Things of nature, things of flesh. He made our bodies out of dust of the earth that he created, but it was a natural thing. So from the very beginning, we were made to walk around nature things, fleshly things, but we were never meant to stay there. We were formed out of the dust. It is a material thing, not a spirit thing. But make no mistake, we were formed by God, by the God, by spirit. Because of that, we see things of natural. We hear things of the natural. Our senses are tuned to the things of the natural around us. Therefore, we understand the natural through the things that are, occur in the natural. We have to live in flesh, but we are called to walk and be of the Spirit. And then we have it where flesh becomes a God. And some say that's not possible, but it is. 
It is. God's creation since then has replaced the God of Moses, Isaac, Abraham, Jacob, and David with the God of flesh. We've replaced the Creator with His creation. We have ourselves become gods. But remember what I said, to see good things in the flesh and to call them good is just that. It's in the flesh, right? To drive this home, let's take a look at what he just mentioned. It was ironic he said that the social media craze. What well, used to be a way that I could connect to buddies, friends, and sometimes family has now become the way I log into my banking system. It's the way I do business through a platform that's free. From a tech standpoint, I'll tell you something that was told me a long time ago. If the platform is free, you are the product. Let that sink in just for a minute. Everything you do, you're watching. Somewhere, somewhere. I'm not saying it's all a bad thing. I... I do believe it's a bad thing, but someone's watching what you do, and you don't have a clue. We created that. We created our God, right? We've given him so much power, and I don't mean just one. We've given the whole part of it so much power. We're almost powerless. You see people rise to fame overnight, elevating them so fast to a status that we were probably never meant to have. Followers, people doing negative things, and I've heard stories of people committing suicide because they went to a concert. Why? Because those people have let the flesh world stay a little too long, and they've not let the spirit come in and clean house. This is no different than when Moses came down from the mountaintop with God's law. And the people had already made another idol. You see, while the church was busy working on laying out the structure for the future generations of that people, they said, you know what? We're not going to wait on you to come down from the mountain. They would rather create a new God than take a few steps and serve the true God. And that's where we are each and every day. A.W. Tozer said that since we've created these gods, nothing shocks us anymore. We're not moved of what they do. It just is just something we watch on TV. There's no emotion to it. There's no spirit to those gods. There has to be point four, a trans a transition of authority. You see, Jesus even said, You obey those who have authority above you. The transition of authority, it's not until we are born again. Born again under the blood of Jesus that we're able to see, hear, think, smell, taste, and finally do the things of the Spirit. While we're in the flesh, we're under the law. Where we're tried, we're punished, and ultimately condemned. We know of one law that we have to all live with. It's the law of gravity. Right? Y'all familiar with that? I think it says something like what goes up must come down. We, uh, well, we do, but there's going to come a day when our spirit says, these people have held here too long by your laws. And we begin to move under grace and we begin to move under mercy. And that day comes along and we're going to break that law of gravity because we're going to go up. But my goodness, we're not coming back down. People will walk together and it says you'll look by people and they'll be gone because we're gone. That law will no longer have a hold on me. We have so many fleshly laws. But now, once we move under the authority of mercy, or of, of spirit, we have grace and mercy. Our flesh does not know how to process this. Because we're flesh, right? It's like oil and water. We're not meant to see the things of the spirit in the flesh. And that is what Paul says. I must die daily. I have to realize it's not this body. It's not about me. It's not about the flesh. It's not about things that I can do or see or taste or touch here. It's all about there. It's all about him who died on the cross. It's all about the things of the spirit world. Not here. Not these buildings. This building's a building. Look to your neighbor. You out there in this building, you are the church of Mulberry Assembly. You guys are this church. Not these pews, not this building, because what? These pews and these buildings are made of wood. They're fleshly. 
because we can see them. We can understand how that was made. If that pew was a spirit, our eyes and flesh could not see that process. Guys, we are the church. And upon our church gates of hell will not stand here. But I promise you, if there's a fleshly peace upon that church, yeah, it opens the door. It's a crack in the, in the crack in the wall. We have to step out of that. The most important part of transitioning from flesh to the spirit is the communication. It's awesome. It's amazing. You know, in World War II times and in other worlds, I'm sure they had spies that go out that try to gather communication intel from people. Right? That's a big, that's a big deal. When I enlisted, I wanted to be in, in psyops. I wanted to play with people's minds. Still kind of do that. <laughs> but you just ask Courtney. And they said, you can't do that. You're colorblind. I said, okay. But there's whole divisions out there in strategic warfare that just mess with your head, whether you can see it or not. But the communication, when wrapped in the Holy Spirit, you know, no one can hear that. That's that direct line in the throne room. Romans 8, 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit makes intercession with groanings that we cannot say. You see, when we're of the flesh, we begin to pray. It's not long until our prayers feel like they're not going above that ceiling. It's not long till we forget what we're going to pray or what we want to say about so-and-so or how they needed to help us. But my goodness, let us step into that spirit realm when the Holy Ghost and fire wraps up what what we're about ready to say and transmits it up to heaven. We don't even have to know what we're doing. And it doesn't really matter because the one who created that language is the one on the other end getting it from us. We have to walk in the spirit. This world of flesh will one day burn. But God's word will never pass away. His spirit has to be inside of us. Every single step that we take our fleshly bodies, our fleshly minds were never meant to contain, control, or work in the things of the Spirit. Never was meant to. So church, let me ask you tonight. We want that. We see Ashbury revivals taken off. We see all kinds of good, good spiritual good things happening with our fleshly eyes. We see them bear witness with our, our spiritual eyes. Well, let me say something. I don't care who you are. I don't care how old you are. If you're letting flesh dictate your directions in your life, you will not be able to walk in and have control with and begin to operate and move in the spirit world. It cannot happen. It will not please God. It will not be a funnel to you through the Holy Spirit. If you allow flesh to dictate our lives, God's we then, it is us. It's putting up the roadblock and said, I see. My spirit bears witness, God. I see what you're doing over here, but I don't want that. I'm going to say, we all know there's not a person in this building tonight that doesn't know the hearts of our future is in our children and our kids. If you're not praying for that generation, shame on you. Because you were there one day. You were there not long ago. See what I did there? And you would want someone to battle in spirit for you. You would want someone at that age going through God knows what in those schools every single day to get down on your knees and begin intercessory prayer in the spirit for them. They're worth it, I promise you. Even though I don't understand them. God does. You see, that's a fleshly world. That's the flesh saying, I don't get this generation. But my God is sitting up there saying, I called you for this generation, young man. I called you, sister, for that generation right there. Now get out of the flesh and begin to walk in the anointing that I have laid out before you. That's what we're called to do. We're not called here to sit and look pretty, although y'all look amazing. You're called for something better than that. So step out of the flesh. Don't let it lead you, because guess what? One day your flesh is going to fail you. It's going to fail. You're going to have gallbladder stones, have heart attacks. You're going to look like me. 
But the Spirit, God, the Spirit will never fail you. You see, it's that rock that will never shake. It's that rock that will never move. It is the Spirit that will lead us and fuel us and empower us to walk through the halls of our schools, to walk through the halls of the courtroom, to walk through the halls of our Congress and say we're taking it back as a spirit, not in the flesh. You guys do no good in here making laws that attain to the flesh. We're walking in the Spirit, and we claim it for the Spirit. We claim it for God Almighty. No longer will flesh rule our lives. But I'm, you know, I don't mean to go out there and break a lot of laws. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is don't let flesh, the things we can see and control. Because if you get focused on things of the flesh, things that you can see and control with our fleshly eyes, you'll go crazy. Because it's not supposed to be that way. We have to see. We have to walk. We have to operate in the spirit world or we're not going to make it our kids ain't going to make it your loved ones pray for them all you want to if you're not praying in wrapped up language where the enemy cannot get to it you see our tongues our tongues are flesh well flesh is going to fail our tongues are going to say things that we hurt people with we can destroy, we can destroy families with our language. Our very own tongues can destroy families. I don't want that. God forbid. I never give advice. We never give advice unless it is through the Spirit. We can't see the end from the beginning, but God can. We cannot save people, but God can. We cannot heal people in flesh, but God can. We have to quit living like we're defeated because we need to walk in the spirit where God lives and where he talks to us and teaches us and empowers us and say, you're not a loser. You're not a, a, a person that's going to be defeated. I'm going to rise you up. But let me tell you, he's not going to do that in flesh. We got to leave this behind. Our desires are, oh man, I could tell you about desires. I wanted the best of the best all the time. And God blessed us with abilities to get it. And looking back, it's not, it's not worth it. I could have the best and it wouldn't be enough. Because the best down here is nothing. Nothing compared to what's in the spirit world. I'll see my dad again in the spirit. I'll never see him in the flesh, never again. I can't pray over you effectively in the flesh. Not for healing or spiritual things. I can pray for material things, but I even doubt that if it does any good. Because a lot of times our, our wants are messed up. We have to walk in the spirit. Now more than ever, we have to be spirit-led. We don't lead the spirit, right? Flesh does that. That's a leadership thing. That's a quality of humanistic traits. We have to step back and say, okay, God, okay, God, wherever you want me to go. I'm going to tell you, hey, when we decided to take that position, it broke my heart. I love you guys. You're my family. I've grown to love you so much, and I care for you all deeply, as I'm sure your pastor does. He taught me to love you all. He beat it in my head. So, no, I'm just kidding. But that, can I be honest? It's not a flesh thing. It's not a flesh thing. You didn't welcome us as fleshly things. You didn't. You don't know how. That's what Paul says. You did it in the spirit. And your spirit's more witness, and we became family. So please, please, anyone comes in. When you go out to get new ones, when you bring them in, when you teach them, pour into them. Don't do it in the flesh. It will do them no good. It will do them no good. Love them in the spirit. Pray for them in the spirit. And church, I'm going to be honest, to do that, you have to be in the spirit. We can't do it in these bodies. These are going to fail, and they're going to break. They're already breaking down. And I wake up, and I can't even stand up straight for the first 20 minutes of my day. 
But in the spirit, I never even lay down. Oh, it's so awesome. We have to be led by the spirit. Our flesh simply doesn't have the knowledge, the stamina, or even the ability to fight what's going to come through those doors. I've never seen these days. You have never seen these days. But yet there's nothing new under heaven. You see, God sees the beginning and the end, the same glance. And He's my God. And He sent His Son, His only Son, to die on that cross. So why? That we can walk in flesh? God forbid. We are ineffective in the flesh. We can't do our neighbor any good in the flesh. He called us to walk in the Spirit. So tonight, if you have a need, if you have a desire, if you have anything that only the Spirit can do, guess what? You're in the right place. You can do this anywhere. You do it in your closet, your car. You have to get to a place where you leave flesh behind. And you walk and you operate. That's the key. You operate. And what I mean by that, you begin to look through spirit eyes. You begin to hear through spirit ears. And you begin to speak in the spirit. That is how you will be effective in any life you expect to touch. So to not is no time like the present. If you need healing, if you need a movement, if you need just a good old-fashioned infilling with the Spirit, guess what, church? It's time. If you are willing and if you are able to not, please, everyone, just come down and let's seek the Spirit tonight. Let it fall down upon us. Let it begin to equip us and empower us to walk and change lives around us. So tonight, if you would, please just come on down and let's seek the Spirit of God and let it take the place of the flesh.
The master never fails, does he? He always comes through. Every step of the way, he always ministers and meets our needs, doesn't he? Amen. We got some things going on. Mother's Day is coming up. Sunday, if you got a living mama, make sure you let her know you love her deeply. Amen. Because I'm telling you, mothers are a gift. If God keeps dealing with us, we're going to talk about mothers, the birthing agents of our world. And I believe it'll minister to you. I really do. I want to do one more thing here tonight. I want to pray over John and Courtney and ask God to just, you know, if, if they win souls and bless people, I won't end on the reward. Just how it is, amen. You know, God, he looks through the tunnel of time, and he sees all the things that's going to go on. You and I can't see that. Is that right? So it's a great honor and a blessing that we can uh, have a part with people, and they have a part with us, and, and God moves people into places of ministry. It's a great thing. So, John and Courtney, would you you guys come? Amen. We just we want to do this as a church body, as a church family. We want to be able to bless you and pray God's hand upon you guys to continue. His hand's already been on you. It's not something new, but it's an, it'll be a new place. It'll be a new thing. Amen? Yeah, I didn't see Jonathan. I got tunnel vision. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like for you, the bodies, many will. I want you to come gather around these guys. We're just going to. Surround them in prayer and support. Ask God to minister for them. His first day on the job there is going to be the 21st. So that's right around the corner. Amen. And until then, we're going to get all the goody we can out of your lollipop. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I love you guys. I appreciate you. Anoint you. Amen. Hallelujah you can bless them father thank you for the testimony you raise people up you move them into your kingdom in your business and you're going to minister through these lives you're going to give them god protection but you're going to give them god spiritual direction and you're going to give them fruit for the labors of their hands and you will bring lives in touch with them that father they have never met they've never dealt with and you're going to minister in and through their lives father the experiences that they have received and they are given they're going to impart and they're going to bless and they're going to represent you every step of the way we ask you to minister to them each day lord let their life be filled with constant constant flooding of your spirit and love let them be sense your undergirding hand and your protection and most of all your company and fellowship as they walk these pathways they've not walked yet in jesus glorious and holy righteous name hallelujah hallelujah let your name be glorified father we thank you we thank you for the blessing to love this family in Mulberry Assembly. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Master. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the mighty Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a mighty God. Amen? We love you guys. Appreciate you. Amen. He's a mighty God. It's a good word tonight, too. Awesome word. Amen. I told Brother John, Sister Courtney, this will always be home. Don't forget it. Always be home. Amen. You're a part of us. We love you guys. Ask God to keep you. We'll be back here on Sunday, everything holding up. We'll have the church open Saturday evening. At 7, if you can make it and pray, be wide open. After Mother's Day, we'll be putting a little more structure in our prayer time, but we're going to come and pray and ask God just to have his way on Mother's Day. There will be a lot of unsaved kids in church on Mother's Day, I hope. So if you've got unsaved kids, Mama, bring them to church. 
We're believing God to move by the Holy Ghost. We love you. God bless you. Shake hands with one another as you go in the name of Jesus.